but it's worth reading. It's worth reading because it talks so much about the sovereignty of God. It talks so much about what our Lord has for us. Family, um, if somebody can put a timer, I believe last time I was here. Oops. <laughs> May the Lord help us to be. Um, okay. Um, just for the sake of time, we need a timer. Okay. So um, I'm not going to read. As we move along, we are reading again the scripture of today. Amen. And uh, next slide. Uh, next, uh, I, I always, like always, <laughs> I like starting with a recap of what we learned last week. And last week, um, we learned about the only potentate, which talk about God, and we're in the month of sovereignty of God. And, you know, uh, I just brought some few points that, you know, we learned last week that God is supreme. You know, he's the creator of heaven and earth and the whole galaxy is in his hand. He, he, he rules it, he controls it, he created it and he's in power, he's supreme. He's the holder of the entire galaxy. He's the holder of everything that he has created and sustain all things together. And to talk about um, that God, you know, we also learned that who God is and God is that I am, that I am, the, the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the King of kings. And that he also, uh, he, he does all that he please and he carry out his purpose. And he, everything, anything that is will prevails. You know, it's, it's what is taken from Psalms. You know, if you read from Psalms, talk about uh, God is in heaven and he does all that he pleases. And, he, you know, and in Isaiah 55, 11 says that, so shall my word be out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what, which I've purpose and shall succeed in all things. And it's so true that our God is so amazing. Hallelujah. That is so amazing that um, everything he does, everything he purpose, it will just come to pass because it is his will. And it surely bring into completion. It surely bring into purpose. Hallelujah. And he's also the God that declared the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So even as, um, as we are reading, um, as we continue moving forward, you know, uh, next slide, we are going to look that before in today, in our today's message, we, we, have, we, we are going to learn about I am that I am he is the sovereign God. And, you know, it is such, <laughs> it's so amazing how even the, the, the title of today's message, I was even like, oh, last month I just talked like, oh, like Jesus Christ be the foundation, you know, the foundation of creation, like Jesus Christ is the foundation of creation. But, and then uh, this month, like I am, is the sovereign God, like, no, you know, God have a such, such a sense of humor. I was like, wow, this is so amazing. You know, that means God has something, you know, that he just bring us to that place of understanding. And today we are going to, we are, we are, before we even lay the foundation, we have something that we have to look, uh, probably like um, put in that place of really knowing that we serve a God and the God that we serve, he has a name and the God that we serve, he has nature and attribute. You know, the reason why I'm saying this is because, well, we are living in the, in the, in the world that they have so many God and so many, Lord and so many whatever, so many kings, you know, but we have to come to that place of knowing and understanding, you know, those points, you know, and it's only through that that we're going to have a clear picture and who God is and, and how we can see God and how we can relate to God and how we can see ourselves because it's only out of understanding who God is that you'll be able to understand who we are and how we can see ourselves and how we can relate to God and how we can relate to others. Because if you do not really know who you are, it's difficult for you to relate to others, you know? Because imagine you have been in that position that so many things happened in your life and you have to carry all those things out and put it out there. And it happened. But it, 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 it's also, you know, to help us to, to, to remain obedient to the faith, to remain and to walk in faith and in faithfulness. Because so many times we, we are in that position that um, so many things, you know, so many things may happen around us, especially in this time of COVID. Probably 
this is the message for each and every one of us because when I was just going through it, I was like, wow, you know, the message that I'm bringing is not really very complex, <laughs> like other message, but it's much a little bit simpler. Probably I'll say much about exalting somebody, you know, you are in the situation that um, living a life, you know, eye after other, it just brings to the topic that we have here, the yearly topic, belonging, which it, it, if, if you really, really lay that foundation, you really know we are really rooted in that place of understanding our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then we'll be able to, to belong to him and totally remain obedient, totally walk and walk in faithfulness, walk in obedience and be able to truly, truly belong to our Lord. Amen. Um, next slide. So when you talk about we serve, I just want to talk about the we serve. The first point, you said we serve a God. You know, there are so many God in our community, right? Um, I'm not saying that because even God says that, yes, there are so many God in our community. You know, if you read the Bible, you just think like they have gone after the other gods and things like that. But and then we serve our God and our God is the living God. He's not a deaf God. Is the living God. Um, if in our scripture of today, if you read in verse 6, verse 6 of our scripture of today, Isaiah 64, start from verse 6 to 7, says that some pour out gold from their bag and weighed out silver in their scales, and they hire goldsmiths to make it into a gold. You see, so we have other gods out there. People make God out of things. People make God out, out of so many things right now. And then say that, and they bow down and worship it. And they lift it into their shoulders and carry it and set it up in place. And there is a stand. From that court, it cannot move. Even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It, it cannot save them from their trouble. So it, you, you see clearly that this is one of the scriptures. There are so many other scriptures that God says that, yes, they have made God and they have gone out of it. And yes, we are living out in a society that we have so many God and those God that are God made by human hand. They are God made by human, by, by human beings, you know. And whatever it is that it is in our life that we have put our God, we have to remove it because it is not God. It's something that we made it, you know, something we made it. And now we serve. We serve a living God. And Jeremiah says that, but the Lord is true God and he's a living God and everlasting king. At his wrath, the earthquake and a nation cannot endure his indignation. It's so amazing. Hallelujah. It's so amazing. Because even if you read in Matthew 16, you know, Simon Peter was saying, was replying to Jesus, said that you are Christ, the son of the living God, the son of the living God, which means, our God is a living God. Hallelujah. We serve a living God. We do not serve a deaf God. We do not serve. But yes, we are living in a society that people have different kind of God. And those God have no ear, as the Lord said. They have no mouth. They have no strength. They have no power. They have nothing. But we still make them God. You know? And the second point I want to emphasize is that we the God that we serve have a name. You know, I remember last sermon, I know when I was just speaking about Jesus Christ is a foundation, the foundation of a Christian faith. If you haven't watched that video, please, you can go and look for it and watch it. It was amazing for me. It blessed me, you know, and, you know, the God, the name of our God is I am. Hallelujah. I am. And I was looking, when I was looking to in the scripture for, for that. And I was like, but Lord, I mean, you don't have another name. Well, you know, I was just looking like, okay, I can just go there like, oh, it's I am, right? But then I went to the scripture and I saw that in only passage, the only passage that God said that he will, like he's, he really mentioned his name was in Exodus 3 from 13, 15, when talk about Moses, when he went to talk about Moses, um, are uh, um, talking, sending Moses to the people of Israel. And then the people of Israel, and then he was afraid, he didn't want to go, so many excuses. And then at the end, he was asking like, okay, in response, and then uh, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father sent me. And they asked me, what is this name? What is his name? And then, <laughs> then 
what shall I tell them? Moses was asking. And then God answered Moses, says that I am who I am. This was his name. This is the name. This was his identity. He was giving, you know, somebody like asking, go, go to that house. Nobody know you in that house. Go to that house and tell them that I want this. You will not just go and tell them like, oh, I came here and the person told me to give you 5,000 RMB. Nobody will give you. But and then probably somebody sent it you there like, oh, you, somebody told you to come here to, so that I'll collect probably 5,000 RMB. And the person will ask you, who sent you? It's like, oh, so you they have to have an identity. So that place, oh, okay, I'll just say that, oh, ah, Kremilda, her name is Kremilda Samuel, she sent me, she said that go and collect 5,000. And the person, you know, if, if the person that I've been sent to know, of course, the person will just come, go to the house, take the 5,000, give it to me, okay, just go. Because at the end of the day, I know who will I go for account. I know who I go to to say that, hey, okay, I just, gave that person 5,000, I'm here and I want to collect it back. I know where I can get my response. And this is what he gave to, the, to Moses. And when I was looking through the scripture to see, okay, where the God also mentioned his name, I didn't see it. Like his actually name, I didn't see it. That was the only passage. But of course, that is not only his name. That is not only because, you know, when God says that this is name, it's almost like saying that, okay, this is my name, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have other names. So that's why you say that this, uh, you know, they have like, if you put in the context what God's name are, we can categorize like there is his actual name and their name that he calls himself and their name that are attributed by other people. It, we, you can truly find that in the scripture. We can really find in the scripture. And you know, one of the names, uh, for example, we say that their name, that is his name, I am, and it's only found in Exodus, you know, I am, it is his name, hallelujah. And then we also have name that God calls himself, you know, when people ask him, what is your name, or when he's about to give a, or he's give a word for somebody, like, tell them I, this person, you know, and this is uh, the name of um, of some of the name that he called himself, and he's saying, you know, you can see that in Genesis, so he said that when Abraham was 90 years old and the Lord appeared to him and, and said, I am El Shaddai, which is God Almighty, serve me faithfully and I'll leave the problem. He called himself God, El Shaddai. I am El Shaddai. He called himself God Almighty. And then in another passage, when Exodus, when Moses was asking God, like, oh, you know, show me your glory, show me your glory, and you know, asking and asking and asking. And the Lord says to me and said to Moses, I will cause all my goodness and I'll proclaim my name, the Lord. I'll proclaim my name, the Lord. This was another name that he gave it, the Lord in your presence. And then in, if you read in Isaiah 42, it says that I am the Lord. That is my name. I am the Lord. But remember that there's I am in the beginning and then the Lord. That means it is a name that he gave himself and it is his name. Hallelujah. And, uh, and it, this is name. And we also have names that other people have attributed to the Lord. You know, even if you say that, that place of saying that, okay, the attributed name, there are so many, there are so many. But if you look in I am itself, you know, him telling his name that is I am. The name I am in itself is not just, how can I even put it? It is not just a name that it is, have a limit on its own. It's limitless. That's, I even wonder why can he say that his name is I am in the first place? Because I am is not a limited name. We have a name, okay, my name is Camilda. Well, what does it mean? It only means one thing. My name only means one thing. But his name, it is not limited on meanings. Its name, it doesn't mean in excess in itself. My name is Camilda, and it means a warrior, the one that fights with a helmet. Of course, but and then it's only the one that have, that worried that have, fight with Hamid. It's only that one, the name of my name, the meaning of my name. And then I ask myself like, oh, that is the only thing that comes out of my name. But I am, it doesn't just limit itself. And this is what the Bible says. You know, if you read and go for it, it says that, and, and, and most of it goes to say, you know, in different parts in the scripture, because well, it says that his name, what is the meaning of his name? 
he says that I am, I am the door, I am the true vine, I am the, I am the carpenter, I am the, you know, like, I am the bread of life, I am, <laughs> I am the, there's so many I am, I am the bread of life, I'm the true vine, I am the father, I am these, I am the good shepherd, I am, you know, all these things are his name, that's why it's limitless. For most of us, we are here, we, our name only means one thing, and God's name, limit, it's limitless. That's why his name is I am, because he's not just one thing. He's not just one. His name doesn't even have an excess. The enemy carries his excess. It's not limit. It's unlimitless. It's beyond understanding. Hallelujah. And we also see that the name, that the, the attribute that says that, you know, that attributed name actually comes from the name that he said he called himself, I am the Lord. That, that is what it's come from. When he says that I am my name, this is how he called me, the Lord, because he said that this is my name, I am God, and then it is also his name. And then he said that he, I also called him myself, the Lord. And the, the, the part that they called himself the Lord and God, that's where people now come because the name is come from name Yahweh, which is translated in English to be the Lord. You know, you, you really find in scripture with, where people call them Jehovah, Jehovah is, 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 a, um, is a variant translated also for the Lord. That's why we say Jehovah, Jehovah, because that Jehovah is a translated from the, from the Lord. Hallelujah. And it says that he is the gyro, he is the provider, he is the healer, the rapher, he is the Nisi, the shalom. This is what the Lord Nisi. In another one translated to Jehovah, he's almost saying that Jehovah, the Lord shalom, the Lord, you know, this is what our people have been counter God and they brought that name out of it. Hallelujah. And there are also other names. If you see, he called himself, you know, and when he says that I am the Lord, he was saying that, yes, I am the Lord. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the Lord of the end and the beginning. I am the Lord. The, 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 the sovereign Lord, when he says, Adonai, the Lord, the master of the universe, I am the Lord, I am this, I am the ancient of day, when it come about me being the Lord, being the Lord, being the God, you know, hallelujah. So he's the Roy, is the Elohim, is the Elion, is the, all those names come from, you know, him telling himself who he was, hallelujah. So if you if, if you if you really read, you know, all the scripture, those are his name. There are so many scripture on it, actually. I just brought some of them. And we are going to talk about um, the next point is God have a nature and attribute. Hallelujah. God have a nature and attribute. Pardon. Okay, next slide. So when you talk about God having nature and attribute, we do not just serve a uh, a random God, like a God just, you know, well, it's not like what says that God that people are carrying their shoulders and go and did some, did some funding, some heat, added some heat into it and they mold it. It's not like that. The God we are serving is a living God. The God we are serving is all powerful. And says, it says, when you look about, when you, when we define, you know, the word nature and attribute, you know, and we describe God, we talk about his quality, his character, his characteristics and ascribe, you know, to him being the I am, to him being the God. And we saw, we, I just want to, it's something that you, I also minister lastly, you know, we can go there and find, you can say that our God, you know, the nature and the attribute, our God is all powerful, is an omnipotent, is omniscience, is an omnipresence, and is an omnibenevolence. You know, all this quality, all this nature are of the I am. He is the only God that possess all of it. He's the only God, and there is no other. The Bible says that I am God, and there is no other. That means beside of him, there is no other God. You know, you can read that. You can read that um, if you read in a scripture today, in Isaiah 56, if you, rem if you read, if you read um, from, verse, from verse 2, from verse 9, says that remember the former thing of those of long ago, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me. 
that means he is God and there is no other. Just what we learned last week that he is the I am that I am, is the God of gods, he is the King of kings, he is the Lord of lords. He is and there is no other aside from him. There is no other, hallelujah. The Bible says there is no other, hallelujah, like him. That means he's the unique. All other ones are false. Or that's like, you know, I mentioned last, last, last time, like all other, there is no other. You know, those are made, as the Bible says, they are made by human hand. We have invented it, you know, in our lives. We have invented it in our community, in our society. All those things out there, they have invented. Hallelujah. People have made them. There is nothing such things like, oh, it's true or something. They're all false. Hallelujah. They are demonic. They are false. They are whatever they, you can call them. They are out there. But then we serve a living God. And he is the all-powerful. He's the all-knowing. He's the all-present. He's his presence and everywhere. And he's all-loving. Hallelujah. It's amazing how this God just, um, just like um, bring us. But before we even look on all these attributes, you know, there are few, I like to bring, put us in that position of really answering questions, certain questions that will determine, you know, our understanding. Why we say that our God is sovereign? <laughs> you know, sometimes we really say that, oh, you know, like last, last time I was talking about, why do we say that Jesus Christ is the foundation of Christian? Well, there are other people have their, also, or their own foundation, but in them, why do we say our own sovereign God is our own God, uh, his name is I am, is sovereign? Because he's all powerful, because he's all knowing, he's the one that has all knowledge, because he possesses all power, because he created the heaven and earth, because he has all knowledge of the past, the present, and future, because he have uh, is everywhere. Hallelujah! He's everywhere. Hallelujah. He's, he, he have all wisdom. His love have no boundaries. You know, the Bible says that he filled the earth. Hallelujah. He filled the earth with his power and his love have no boundary. The Bible says, you know, next slide. You know, the Bible says in the Romans, if you read in Romans, if you, Rome, if you read in Romans 1 and 24, his invisible attribute and namely eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived and ever since the creation of the world and the things have made, things that he have made and they are without excuse. So they are without excuse for although the new God, for although the new God and do not honor him as God and give him thanks, but they became futile in their thinking and the foolish heart were darkened. So we see that our God is all God. The Bible, when the Bible says that no, no amount of angels, no amount of mountain, no amount of difficulty, no amount of sin will separate you from the love of God, will separate you from the presence of God, will separate you from the power of God, will separate you from God. We also talk about he's the same God that fills the entire universe with his presence fill the entire world. So, you know, that's why, you know, when the Bible says that in his invisible attribute, <laughs> hallelujah, in his invisible attribute, things that people, though their attributes are invisible, but namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived. So when people lack knowledge, when people lack discernment, they have been perceived, but well, there's, there, there, there's that place of lack of knowledge and lack of discernment. And then he said that ever since the creation of world, in the beginning, they have been made. So they are without excuse, which means though they have that, they have refused to believe. They have refused, although the new God, he says that although the new God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish here. Where that, that's why where there is lack of knowledge, lack of discernment. It's not because that lack of knowledge, that of is not because it was not displayed, but it's because they refuse to believe, they refuse to honor, they refuse to acknowledge him as God, and refuse to be grateful. We are living in the position. Why do I say that this message is much about bringing somebody in that position of really being grateful, of really exalting the name, no matter the situation that you are. God created everything, even in his invisible attribute. He says that he makes his power, his divine nature being shown, his divine attribute being shown, hallelujah, to the world. 
it's only when we come in that position of believing, it's only coming that position of acknowledge him, honor him, and accept that he is Lord. And in, 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 we always being grateful, always being grateful in all the circumstances. Then, it's only then that we magnify, we glorify, we acknowledge him as sovereign Lord in our lives. Hallelujah. It's only then, in Romans 8 says that, and we know that in all things we work together. <laughs> you know, when I was looking at that scripture, I've heard this, this thing that I'm saying, even unbelievers know about it. Like, oh, all things work together for good. Ah, all things work together for good. What? Not all things work together for good for everybody. You know, the Bible says that we know that all things work together for those who love God. To do so that in that position of you now, you know, coming before the Lord, you as a believer, you have to have that confidence in you that all things, and we know it's something that you have to know, hallelujah, it's something that you have to know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, you love the Lord, that's why you're here, the Bible says that all things work together for you, and those who are called according to his purpose, you know, is for you. Now, you may ask me like, oh, Sister Primilda, you know, some people will say that, uh -huh, mm, all things work together. You know, some people out there will be like, oh, all things work together for you. Don't worry about it. They're lying. <laughs> ah, <laughs> they're lying. All things work together. Because if you depend on nature, if you depend on just living life, if you depend on just enjoy yourself, nothing will good. Why? Because the enemy won't allow it. <laughs> the, only, the enemy will make sure that all things will not work for good for you. That's why the scripture says that for those who love the Lord, because if you do not love the Lord, then all things will not work for good. Then if you do not, you are not called according to this book, then all things will not work for good. That's why we see in a society that our people, you know, there are, there, are, there are people that though they might have everything they have when the things that are hard on them we see that in the life of people that do not have god no matter how much somebody will come and say oh all things work together for you and everything will work together for you i'm not saying this i'm just saying things we are, most of us i believe we are coming to a place where we are coming to the place where we have so many witchcraft in the world and we know these things if you say that you don't know, you are deceiving yourself, you know, hallelujah. And I, well, if you do not know, well, I can also accept that, of course. But most of us, we are in this meeting right now. We know that we are coming in the, in the place of probably those that, but almost everywhere. Well, witchcraft is everywhere. No matter if it's white or black witchcraft, but it's still there. So, so we know that we are coming in the place where they voodoo, all those things. How can you say to somebody who's an unbeliever, oh, you are sick. You see that this person is dying. You are saying that all oh, things work together for you. It will not work out. It will not work together for his good. The person, if he's sick, is going to die because the enemy is just, the enemy is just doing his job, destroying. They say that they come to kill, to steal and destroy. And he's going to do all these things. But the Bible says that it worked together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we have to come to that place of really knowing that we, as a children of God, all things will work together for us. All things will work together for us. Hallelujah. All things will work together for us. And it has to be a declaration in your life. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. And the way you believe it, it brings to that place of really acknowledge God and be grateful in everything that happened in your life. Hallelujah. So when we are looking, next slide. So when we are, when we are, when we are talking about really knowing, um, when you talk about the attribute of God, you know, we say that God is omnipotent. It's all powerful. Hallelujah. If, let us read what it says in, in, in our, our verse of today. Starting from verse 3 says that, listen to me, you descendant of Jacob, Jacob, all the remnant of people of Israel, you whom I've upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and gray hair, I am he. I am he who sustains you. So is the I am. 
Hallelujah. So I am he. And it says that I've made you and I'll carry you and I'll sustain you and I'll rescue you. With, door, with, with whom will you compare me? Or count me equal. To whom will you like me that we may be compared? The Lord says that he has what? He has created you. He upheld you since your birth. He has created you. you. He carried you since you were born. Since you were born, he made you. It's the same way that is the categorize in the, in the, you know, if you read in the, in Psalms 139, that actually chapter, they talk about also the sovereignty of God and how God is sovereign in all those four things. Because if you look on all those four points that I've mentioned, they are also sub, sub within them. Like it, it's the one point can really say a lot about God. It doesn't have really a limit. Hallelujah. He says that, and then this is what it says in Psalm 139, it says that, for you created my inmost being, you unite me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in your secret place, when I was woven together in the depth of the earth. Your eyes saw my own body. All days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Hallelujah. So you see, God created you. He made you. No matter, you know, well, we are in COVID-19 now. We have made so many plans. We are, we are, some of you say, oh, I'm old now. I need to get married. Or some of you are like, oh, I, at this time, I don't have a job. I don't have a house. I don't have a this. I don't have a that. But God says that I've created you and I've woven you in your mother's womb. From your birth, I've carried you. I've upheld you. And even in your green, even through your old age, I am. He in your life. He, he is, he said that I am He in your life. And because He's Him in your life, He is going to sustain you. Hallelujah. He's going to sustain you. He says that He will carry you because what He made you. I've made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you from that situation that you are facing, from that problem that you have that you think it is a problem, from that situation that you think it is a situation. The Lord says that I will rescue you. Hallelujah. He will rescue you. Jeremiah 39, 32, 70 said that, ah, sovereign Lord, you made the heaven and earth by your great power, the outreach arms. Nothing is too hard for you because he's created the heaven and earth. Nothing is too hard for you. He is sovereign. And how we can apply that sovereignty to your heart is to bring to that, to that place and acknowledge the Lord as sovereign. Is acknowledge the Lord as I am in my life, as I am in your life. Hallelujah. It says that the Bible says that because they did not acknowledge, they became futile and they were darkened. And you ask yourself, how they were darkened? It's because they refused to believe. They refuse to believe because they refuse to believe that he is I am in their life. They refuse to believe that he is the creator of, he is the one that created them, he is the one that held them, woven them, made them. You are made and wonderfully made. You are perfect and wonderfully made. And you believe to you. Some some people refuse to believe that they are wonderful and created. They are beautiful and wonderfully made. And the Bible, the, and the Lord says that I am the one who created you. I am the one who did. You upheld you. Since you have arrived this age that you are, I am the one who has sustained you. I am the one who has saved you from every pit, from every corner, from every circumstances. And it's not going to be COVID-19 that is going to destroy you. It's not going to be COVID-19 that is going to destroy the plans and the, and the purpose and the Lord, the things that the Lord has for you. So we have to come to that place of understanding and really take those things and apply it for life. And how we can apply the sovereignty, we have to apply them. 
Hallelujah. Because one of the question was when I was asking says that you know when when I, when I was just bringing says that how we can then apply that sovereign how we can really see that sovereign God that that sovereignty in our lives. The God sustains us. He's the God that watch over us. How amazing is that? He is the creator. He created you. He's a strong power in you, a strong tower, a refuge in place where you can hide. And he said that there's nobody who can be compared to me. Hallelujah. He's invincible. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is invincible. Hallelujah. And this is what it says um, in 19, uh, from verse 20, uh, or Psalms 188, he said that if only you, God, would slay the wicked away from me, you who are bloodthirsty, because he's the only one, he's the only one that can rescue us, rescue us from the end of the enemy, and he has done that over and over. The only problem is that we do not see it. If you really are, we have to be open our spiritual eyes and really see what is really going on in the spiritual realm. It's so overwhelming that some of us, we don't even want to look at it. But still the Lord says that I'm the one who have sustained you. I'm the one who protected you. This far you have come, I'm the one who did it. Nobody, no arm were too powerful to rescue you, but I did it. Hallelujah. It says that yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours, is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as the head of all. So is the head. The moment that you, you made God, you are not making, you already made him God over all. You made him, you exalted him over everything in your life. Then everything belongs to the Lord. Everything, hallelujah. Amen. Next slide. So he is omniscience, he's all knowing. Hallelujah. He's the God that knows everything. In, some, in, in our verse of today, <laughs> In our verse of today, this is, if you, if you read from verse, um, this is, you read from verse one, verse eight says that, remember this, keep it in mind, take it to heart, your rebels. Remember the formal things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one, no one like me. I made known the end from the beginning, from ancient time, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Hallelujah. He is the one who knows the end. Hallelujah. It is so amazing. He knows the end from the beginning. In book of Revelation it says that I am. When you talk about God calling himself I am or calling himself you know, when he says that I am, when he says that, you know, his name is, doesn't only look like Cremilda's name, <laughs> only one meaning out of it. He says that I am. Hallelujah. He says that I am. And in the relation, he says that I am the Alpha and the Omega. And this is it in our life. He's the Alpha and the Omega of our life. Everything that God has made this far in your life is because he knows. He says that he knows your and before you and your mother womb, he said that everything was written was before him. He saw everything written in his law. He said that he created you. He said that he knew you. He saw you. He predestined you. And now he said that remember all these things. Keep it in mind. Bring it. Keep it in consideration. Take it to heart. Everything. I knew you before you were born, the Lord says. I knew before you were born. So he says that he knows the end. He knows your end from the beginning. Why you worry? Why it is that now we have to worry about the COVID-19? Oh, this COVID-19 is not going. Oh my God, this thing. He says that he knows everything about you. The same God that says he's the Alpha and the Omega of our life, that everything he started in your life, he surely brings to complete because he knows it. 
When the Bible says that he makes all things work together, it doesn't really mean that all things just work then because they will just work. Because he's the one is going to make it work. The Bible, Jesus says that my father is working every day. The reason he's working every day is to ensure that you arrive to that secret place. You arrive to a destiny. You arrive, you will make everything that the Lord has written concerning your life. We said that 20 years or 10 years or five years or three years from now, this is the amount of money that we have in your account. It will arrive not because it is written, but because it's working. He said, well, everything works together. The reason why it works together is not because it's just going to work. The reason why it works together because there is somebody that is so powerful that nothing can detain him to work. He's going to work for your good. And he's working right now. Hallelujah. I, I remember when I was just, I was, I was sharing something with, with a brother. I was like, oh, COVID-19 and this and that. And then he told me like, go and listen to this song, you know? And I think it's Mavic City, something like that. He said that God will work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing I know, or I found or something is God. We will work it out. So God is already working on your behalf. He's going to use COVID-19 situation to, <laughs> you know, let me tell you a secret. You know, you may think, you may think this COVID-19 came. It worked for, it didn't work for my good. But let me tell you, it really worked for my good. I was supposed to write my thesis, my pre-defense, which I did um, before yesterday. I did the presentation. But before that, um, well, I've already write the pre, <clears throat> what I did, I wrote the pre, the, 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 well, the proposal, right? You write the proposal for you to present it. But and then that is something that I knew. The school, because of the COVID and situation, everything was locked before this recent lockdown. They, we, we couldn't do that. We couldn't do it. And because we couldn't do it, they postponed it and rather they shifted to a midterm presentation. Midterm presentation have different kind of contents. It's no longer about you presented the you only will present the you only will present the 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 what the TZ proposal only. You are going to present everything else, like everything concerning your work, how and your study plan and how far you have gone and all and look, there's a, a lot of things, a lot of complex things you have to present. It's not just about you doing the presentation, that is it. But that information I didn't have, nobody told me. My supervisor called me last week, before Sunday, I was last week, I didn't have time, even Sunday, you know, and they told me like, oh, we are going to have a pre, or I would call it a pre-defense this coming week. But and then before he called me, this lockdown came because I was supposed to present it last week, which I had no idea about it. I had no idea about it. Just imagine if my, my school said that, oh, a pre defense, a pre pre proposal, a, pre a proposal presentation is going to be last week. I didn't have the material. I didn't have the document that said that we have to do midterm presentation. And that means they would have failed me. But and then this law called COVID 19 came. Wow, it saved my day. At the end of the day, COVID just saved me. God worked out COVID for me so that. They delayed my presentation almost like another one week so that we could do the presentation this, this two days ago. And I used that one week that they delayed this COVID-19 brought because it's COVID-19. So when, I, when the Bible says that God will work out everything, God will use COVID-19 to work for your good. And God did it for me. How can, me, I didn't have an idea that they, they changed the entire program. Nobody, nobody told me, not even the professor, nobody. My supervisor was the one who even have to call me later. We, oh, they shifted the program, the document, even they sent me the pro document later. I was even, in my mind, I was like, how can they do that? I mean, everybody's aware. I'm the only one who's not aware. I'm going to that college almost every day. Nobody even talk about it. But and then I was, you know, making all this. And, but and then I just, you know, when this COVID and the, at the end of the day, before that, at the end of the day, when this COVID came, 
you know, just something my one of my professor mentioned when I he said that, oh, because of this COVID that came, we, we delayed the presentation that we're supposed to do this week to next week. So imagine now that they did make that week, what would have happened to me? They would have failed me, give me three months to present, delayed my, 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 my graduation. So you can just imagine God works because he knows your end from the beginning. He will use COVID-19 to make, to align, to make his plan work in your life. The same way that I'm just giving you this, 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 the, this, 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 this testimony that I'm giving to you that say that no matter if it's the COVID or it's the disease or it's the delay, whatever you have, you think that God is delaying. God says that I know it all and I'm working out for your good. He said that if your heart condemns us, we know that God is greater than our heart and we know and he knows every he knows that tomorrow he knows that tomorrow Cremilda is going to have presentation but because she does is not aware of it and she does she doesn't know i'm going to bring covid in the town so that they'll lock her school and delay her program so that she will have another one week so that she'll be able to prepare that one week to bring to do the presentation so you can see it's not about the situation that we are facing. It's not about because I don't have money in my account. It's not because I don't have this, I don't have that, or I want that, it will not come to pass. You have to have in mind and to know that the God you serve, he said that you work all out for your good. He's going to do everything. He said that, is, as you know, it will end from the beginning, he's going to work it out. I know the end from the beginning from ancient time, what I still, what, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that pleases me. All of, he have all understanding, he have all wisdom, he have all power. I remember when Daniel was, was given a terminate time, you know, when he was given a terminate time, I'll kill everybody. I'll kill everybody because nobody's telling me about the dream. That was never Nebuchadnezzar saying that I'll kill all the magician and everybody. What he says, what did they, what did Jenny say? Then he said that, wait, just give me a time and I'm going to prepare it. And he, that was it. God used that situation to uplift them. It was because of that revelation that God already wrote in his, God already wrote in his, in the book, you know, concerning Daniel that in the year that Daniel became into captivity is going to become one of the first governor, the, the governor of the, the governor of the entire country. And, the, but did he know that, oh, before that to happen, the Nabuganese have to have a dream. And for that to happen, the decree have to go to the kid to slaughter all the magician, all those things to come, no, but, Will the purpose of God stand? Yes. Why? Because he's the all wise. Because he's all wisdom. He said that my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways are your ways. So you cannot perceive, you cannot know the way God does things. By the end of the day, you know that he's almighty. He's the all. He's the I am that I am. He's the all-knowing God. He says that I am. Whatever you say I am in your life is working. It's going to work it out for your good. Hallelujah. So we have to come to that place in knowing who God is, that is the all-knowing, because he's the all-knowing. He knows everything, even things that are going to happen tomorrow. Then he's going to work so that even that thing, that COVID thing will come, his plan and his purpose, and the promise that he gave me will still come to pass. And it still come to pass, and it's going to come in your life, but you have to acknowledge you have to know that he is the one who knows. You know the situation that you are going through. You know the position that you are right now. You know that you don't have money. You know that you 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 don't have anything. There are things that you are you have in your agenda that's supposed to be done by now, but you didn't do it. You know all these things. You know all these things. I was just amazed and how God just delivered me. And me, in my mind, I was almost like born. I was like, ah, how can they do that? But and then, though it was not on my way, but when I came to new, I just, God just dropped this, oh, like, oh God, you're sovereign. You're so sovereign. And how we allow the sovereign of God to rule in our lives and how the outcome of it, you know, great testimony, things that will happen in life, testimony we have. Hallelujah. Next slide.
So another attribute is that is all present, is everywhere, is omnipresence, is everywhere. Hallelujah. He is everywhere. Being it physical, being it spiritual, being it, you know, his eyes, being it, you know, and Isaiah says that, and they were called, and they were called to, to one another. Holy, holy, holy. They were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole world is full of his glory. You know, the moment that you gave your life to Christ, you became his property. <laughs> I don't know if that is a good word to use, but well, it is the word I'm going to use. You became his property. Who will allow his property to be robbed? I, I, I ask you, who? It's not God, of course. You know, when the Bible, when the Bible is talking about, don't be like that, um, that man that, you know, you know, at the end of the night, you know, the robber came and robbed him everything and went away with his life. Um, I can no longer see the PPT family. Uh, they no longer, they, they rob everything. He says that that man, he did not watch. That's why the bandit came and robbed his house. This was, um, how do you call it? The parable that Jesus was giving to illustrate, you know, his teaching. He says that a man, a robber came in the middle of the night, they robbed everything. The reason why he was robbed is because he did not watch. But and then the God that we serve, he said that he watch every day. He does not slumber, he does not sleep. So you can imagine the God does not slumber, he does not sleep. Who will not allow his property to be robbed, he will not allow his property to be damaged. Who will do that? No, it's not that God because what he is faithful. He says that I am faithful God. He's a good shepherd. He watch over his flock. When he says I am, you know, when you talk about the main name I am, some of our name, well, wonderful thing, but I am. He says I am the good shepherd and a good shepherd watches over his flock. So if you are God's property, God will watch over you. You will not stay all night, don't sleep. I'm not going to sleep. You are just fooling yourself because he, there is somebody that is a greater I am, the sovereign, the almighty power, powerful God watching over you. He is not sleeping. So why shouldn't you not sleep again? So, you know, we have to have in mind in John 1, <laughs> I like this verse in John 1, 1, 40, 40, 48. This is when Natalia, when, when people went, you know, when Natalia came to him, you know, when they brought like Nathaniel to him, you know, after they, they encountered Jesus, where they were bringing one to one to Jesus, and Jesus was just saying something, oh, saying something about him. And this is what Jesus said to Nathaniel. Uh, after, uh, after they brought Nathaniel to him, like, oh, Nathaniel, you know, now this is what Nathaniel responded. How do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So God sees our circumstances. God sees our circumstances. We don't behave like God is not watching us. We don't behave that God is not seeing. And God is saying that I'm seeing your cry. You cry every night. I'm seeing your distress. You are in distress because that thing happened. You are in pain because that thing happened. You are in sorrow because that thing happened. I'm seeing that you don't have money in your account. I'm seeing that in two months, two weeks from now, you are not going to have food. You, you are not going to have food on it. And I'm working to make sure that you, in two weeks time or one week time, you will have money to eat. I know the pain and I'm working and I'm bringing your word towards you and I'm bringing comfort. I know that you're old. I know that you, by this time around, you're supposed to have a wife. You're supposed to have a children. You're supposed to have this. But in the end, God is saying that I'm working now because I'm seeing all these and I'm working out. By the time I'm through with it, you'll be in awe of me. You'll be in that position of saying, giving glory, say that all things, yes, truly work out for good, but more than good, they are wonderful. I'm not saying this because I'm saying, because I'm saying, because the Bible says so. So all things work out, but how will it work out? It will work out because there is a God that watch over us. 
God who watch to protect us. You will not, you, God who do not sleep, who do not slumber. They're all seeing God. He says that even in your secret place, I see you. You know, in Psalms 139, it says that I have searched. Hallelujah, he said that you have searched me, God, and you know me. You know where I sit and you when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going up and my coming down and my lying down. You are familiar with my ways. Before my word, before a word is, is on my mouth, you, Lord, know it completely. When, you hear me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Hallelujah. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too, too lofty for me to attain. Such knowledge is too difficult for us to understand. But he's the God that walk with us, he sleep with us, he wake up with us, he jog with us, he play with us. Whatever we are doing, his eyes. He says that I watch you as an eye, as an apple, you know, watch you close. As an apple, he says that he carries as a precious apple in his hand, and he watches closer to you. Hallelujah! As an apple, precious, he watches closer. So he sees everything, and because we came, we have now we are having, or we have that understanding that. He sees my circumstances. He sees my problem. He sees my cry. He's here in my face. He says that before a word come out of my tongue, hallelujah, he says that he knows completely. So he knows your prayer. You know, sometimes you think, ah, God answer prayer. He does not just answer prayer. He knows what you even have in your mind, in your thoughts, in your thinking. Hallelujah. He knows the present and the future. He knows he have all knowledge, all power for God, all wisdom, all power, all knowledge is in him. He's the all wise. When we talk about the wisdom of God, I remember we talked about the wisdom of God. Can you still recall the, all the message that was preached that, that man? That is all wise. He's spiritual, his, his eyes is not just, he does not just have a physical wisdom or knowledge, whatever it is, but he's the all wise. He knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. He knows everything. Amen. So with that knowledge, with that process, we acknowledge God, you know. God is the God that sees everything. He's not sleeping. He does not need to sleep. He sees everything. He knows everything. He knows two weeks or one year from now you are graduating. There is place that you need to go and God is sorting out for you. So things don't happen by chance. Things don't happen by chance. I always, before, even before I came to God, I, before I even came to Christ, before I was even born again, I always believed there's a purpose in life. I, there's something in me that always feels like there is more. There's something. It's not just about this life. Like I always, even if a door, I was not, I was not a newborn Christian. I was small. I was young. I was just a girl that used to follow other people to go to church. But and then I knew deep down in me that it, it there is more. It's not just about this. I knew there's something more. I knew there is something. Like I just knew that there is a purpose. Nobody's here just for not being here. But then I knew that there is something. God has a plan for everybody, for everything. How do I knew that? I don't know. <laughs> I just knew. I just have that thinking in my mind or that word in my mind that there is more. And everything has a purpose. Nothing happened by chance. And nothing happened. There is no such thing as lucky in the Christianity or in, uh, in our beliefs. God is the one that orchestrates everything. Amen. So you, you have to have in that position that God is seeing everything you are going through. He sees your difficulty. He sees your cry. He hears your cry. You know, he hears your cry. 
he hear that delay, he knows that by this time he's supposed to be married, he knows by this time, he knows that you are already of age, he knows that you by this time you're supposed to be working that company, he knows, but God says that he also ordained all things to happen in his own time, that there is time for everything, and according to that timing that is already written, that's already written in, 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 in his word in heaven, a book that's already written. And it will come to pass no matter what happened. <laughs> it will come to pass. You know, that is the reason why, you know, well, by the end, probably I, I, I'm trusting God for a greater testimony. But um, by the time I was home, I was trusting God to get admission. Well, it was a promise, it was a word. You can count it whatever you can count it, but it was there. But how would it coming out? How that promise would have been fulfilled? I lost my documents in the process, everything. There is nothing wrong with me, but because it was already written in heaven. No matter what happened, it's a great testimony. I believe one day God perfect everything. I'll just give a testimony out of it. I'll just sit down and just say how the sovereignty of God just played a great role in that phase of my life. Of course, the sovereignty of God is every day, even in our going to sleep, even in our waking out. But we recall them in our life because we see them happen. We see them come into fulfillment. We see the hand of God in each and every, even in the air that we breathe. Amen. Next slide. So, and another one is that God is omnibenevolent. Is the all-loving God? How ah, amazing is the omnibenevolent God? So we see that in all our circumstances, you know, is the so loving God. He loves us so much, so much that He sent His His, his Son. He so loved the world. The Bible said that he so loved the world that he sent his son that he would die for us and give us life, eternal life. Hallelujah. He, 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 he loved us so much that he died for us. He delivered us and set us free from bondage. He reconciled us and he take us to himself. He gave us a new beginning, a new start. He so loved us that he provide for us Hallelujah. He provides for us. He gives us so much. The Bible in Psalms 86, 15 said, By you, Lord, are, com are compassionate and gracious God, God, slow to anger, bounding in love and faithfulness. How God, out of his love, is so faithful to us. How out of his love, is so gracious to us. You know, how of our, out of his love, is so wonderful. He keeps us. He protects us. You know, he says that from from the place where I wake up and where I lay, he protects us. And this is what he says in our scripture of today. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted, you who are now far of my righteousness. I'm bringing my righteousness near. It is now, it is not far away and my salvation will not be delayed. Ha! He said that I'm bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away, and my salvation will not delay. I will grant salvation to Zion, my splendor to Israel. It says that I will bring, I'm bringing my righteousness close to you, and it is not far away. And in his salvation, it is not going to delay in your life because he loves you, and he will grant you salvation. He will grant you splendor. He will grant you splendor, hallelujah, to you because he loves you. And out of his love, he sent his son. That out of his love, he deliver us from bondage, from, from all those worries, from all those, you know, it says that if your burden is too heavy, bring at the feet of Jesus. It as out of his faithfulness, in his goodness, that he, that he, he did that. Who could even out of love give his son to be sacrificed to somebody? <laughs> it is not going to be, I mean, the Bible says that even if that it is possible, still it is not compare. The Bible said that how like who can be compared to me? To whom will you like me? Or that we may be compared to whom will you compare the love of God? 
in Roman, this is how it is described in Roman. In Roman says that, for I'm convinced, how you are convinced, you are convinced that God so loved you, so loved you. You have to be convinced that God so loved you that neither death, no life will separate you from the love of God. No angels, no demons will separate you from the love of God. Neither present situations or worries or problems or whatever it is you call it. No future worry or whatever you can call it. No any power will separate you from the love of God. Neither height or death or how things seem in our life will separate you from the love of God or the things that might happen in your life, you know, might be painful, might be so much, you know, excruciating, might be, you know, can separate you from the love. Nothing else in all creation, not even seen. When it says that no, no, no height, no death, no, no, nothing, not even seen can separate you from the love of God. How do I say that? Because he gave. I'm not saying that sin doesn't separate you from the presence of God. I'm saying that because he poured out his love. The Bible says that he loved the, the word. Hmm. Let me read it. Sin does separate you from the love of, from, from Christ, from, from the presence of God, from the presence. Now, let me read. This is, you can even open with me. He said that, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that who, who, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have an eternal life. Nothing. The love that God did, he already poured out. God will not love you more or less than he already does. It's not because you have sinned, God will love you less. Because, the, you know, the, God, the love that God is saying here, it's not, say, it's not talking about sentimental love. He's talking about sacrificial love. And he already did. He's not going to send Jesus Christ the second time to die so that you show that he loves you. He already did. What you have to do is what Samuel said to the people of Israel. If you read in Samuel, what you have to do is what Samuel said in the, for the people of Israel. This is what Samuel said to the people of Israel. After the people have asked for king, they greatly sinned, Samuel said. And even God said that they also greatly sinned. Since they asked for king, give them. But and then this is what it says. After they have seen and, and well, God called the power of God, came on down and shown the God that God is God, you know, and everything. And this 20 says that. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. The reason why you will not be separated is not because, and it's not because, oh God, you love you. This he says that even if you sin, God will not separate his love from you. What you have to continue doing is that yet. Do not, even if you sin, yet do not turn away. Most of us, when we sin, there is that guilt, there is that shame that comes, and it really takes us from the presence of God. It really takes us, but it, it, someone said that, yes, do not, you know, yet do not turn away from the Lord because you have sinned, or because something happened in your life, or because this happened, or, oh, you know, because my mother died, or oh, my father died, or oh, this happened to me because I was, I was not awarded the best student in my class, or because this happened, I, I trusted God for that thing and did not come to pass. And because of that thing and because that thing happened, oh, I went to that shameful thing, or happened, I went to that process, painful process thing. And that thing, God says that I love you unconditionally. It's not going to be because of death. You are down there in the pit, God will love you less. It's not because you are very exalted and highly, you are shining bright, everybody is going to high move. No. He said that every, in everything, in all creation, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. Why? Because the love of God, it is in Christ Jesus, 
our Lord. It is in Christ Jesus. Nothing would take away, not even demon would take away that from you. So you have to come in that knowledge that even, if, even in that process of the, the worst thing that you do, sin against God, to come to that knowledge knowing that even that I've seen, you have to acknowledge, come before the Lord and ask forgiveness. And this is what the Samuel said. Do not turn away, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn away, do not turn away after you useless idol. They can do no good, nor can they rescue you because they are useless. For the sake of his great name, the Lord do not reject his people. Take this, this is Samuel 12, 20. You can read the entire Samuel, but then what I'm reading, what I'm talking about is from 12 to, to 25. You can just 12, verse 12, to, verse 20 to 25. It says that they can do no good, no rescue, but because they're useless. For the sake of his great name, do, the Lord do not reject his people because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. The Lord will not reject you. Hallelujah. Some of us, you might feel like I've seen, I'm not worthy to come in the house of the Lord because I've seen, I'm a sinner. I'm not worthy to come in the presence of the Lord. The Lord does not love you anymore. The Bible says that for his name's sake, the Lord so much that he gave us, but for his name's sake, the Lord will not reject you. And then says that, well, if you say, someone said that we yeah, are, well, not seen after praying. Well, but then said that, and I will teach you the ways that he is good and right, but there's a but there. After you do not turn away from the Lord, there's a but. He said that, be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully. If that after you sin, and then be sure to, after you sin, be sure to, uh, to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider the great thing he has done for you. Yet, if you persist in doing evil, both you and your king, this is what I'm talking about, but if you persist in your sinful ways, in other words, you will perish. That's why the Bible says that you will perish. But if you, after you have committed the sin, or after you have committed the sin, be sure you come back to the Lord. The Lord will not reject you because he loves you. He gave his son. He's not going to love you less. No, going to love you much. It's not because, oh, you are down there in the pit, the Lord doesn't love you. Oh, love you less. Not because you are you are exalted, you are shining, you are bright, you are the all obedient person that we find in the face of the world. The Lord will love you much. Be, be sure to fear the Lord, to serve him faithfully, and to turn away from wicked, yet you perish. So, the Lord gave us, the Lord gave us, and because of his love, he has remained faithful to you. He has remained faithful to his, to his word. He has remained faithful to his promises. And in due time, the Lord says that I'm working all things together because working for what? For those who love it, because you love the Lord, he is working all things out of his love, out of his faithfulness, out of his goodness, out of his gracious, hallelujah. He's working all things so that you will enjoy and benefit from everything that the Lord has for you. So when you talk about the sovereignty of God, God is so sovereign that he loves you. Hallelujah. This is one aspect of his attribute, of all that you have spoken. You know, because when you talk about him being loving, we are not just talking about he's a loving God, but what out of his love, how, what out of his love comes, comes, or what out of his he, him being all powerful comes? What out of him being all faithful, all, 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 all kindness, or all, all um so sorry? Out of him being all knowledgeable comes. Out of him being all this. Take in consideration and talk about you know the attribute of God. Yes, it is for present this four, but out of it, this four, if you open. The place that they say is all loving, it's faithful, all these things faithful, kind, bounding, patient, so that you don't perish, all these are there. We talk about he all powerful, it's all he be all the creator of hell, the hold of everything, and all this and all that. He be all knowledge that is the he's not just he's a spirit being in his term, in him being a spiritual being, but also being that he sees 
he hears, he knows, he, every other thing is inside there. And how all that is applying in your life. Are you applying? Are you abiding? Are you living in the sovereignty of God? Because it's all about living in his sovereignty. Next slide. It's all about living in his sovereignty. So as a conclusion of all these things, I'm just going to give you some, like some few people who have experienced the sovereignty of God. I believe each, each and every one of us experience because it's simply that you go to sleep and wake up, <laughs> you are already experiencing the, the sovereignty of God. And no the fact that the, 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 the fact that you experience the sovereignty of God doesn't mean because you have to abide. God is so merciful. <laughs> God is so merciful. It's not about you being so obedient so that God will show his sovereignty to you. There are so many other factors. People think that, oh, for me to see the sovereignty of God, I have to work, I have to live in obedience. No, you don't. God is sovereign because he's sovereign. He's his nature. He's an attribute. He's who he is. It's not because you have done good or you have done bad that he's going to be sovereign in your life. He is going to be sovereign in your life because he chose to be. Because he chose. He chose to create the universe. He chose to give his, his, his best everything into the world. He chose to give his life, to give his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for you. And because of that, he chose that out of all these, he's going to qualify you to enter his kingdom in heaven. It's all by sovereignty. It's not about your doing, not about your obedience, not about all this. You know, people are just saying that oh, you have to do this so that you earn that. It's a lie. Noah is a good example of that. God could have decided to wipe everybody, but out of his sovereignty, he considered Noah worthy to be saved, and he was saved. Abraham, out of God didn't have anything to deal with Abraham. I mean, if you take, God could allow Abraham to die, pick another gem, pick another line in the world so that the Messiah will come. But God chose the lineage of Abraham so that he would, out of his sovereignty, and out of his sovereignty, God now make a promise to Abraham, but because he did not have a name which was greater for him to swear, he swear under his own name, under his own authority. Let me open. Uh, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. This is it is. It says that out of it, God did not have any deal with Abraham, but this is because out of his sovereignty, he chose. This is what it says that when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no longer, this is Hebrew 6 13. You read you start from 13. Hebrews 6, starting from 13. When, I, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no greater greater for him to swear by, he saw by, his, by himself. <laughs> he saw by himself. He saw by his name. He saw by his own identity, his own essence, because there's nobody greater to say. You know, that is what he does in our life. But because, you know, God has swept his own name, now that we have privilege to be called um, what sons of Abraham, the descendant of Abraham on the lineage. We have the privilege to come to Christ. Hallelujah. He said that um, he saw by himself saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what he was promised. What out of what he showed him. God did not just promise Abraham. Well, because promise people can turn away from it and whatever they can do. But God did not just give him a promise. God is, is sure on oath. He swore on oath. Hallelujah. This is what it says in 18. God did, the, did, did this so that by two un, unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to, to lie, when who have fled to take hold of the hope set before as may be greatly encouraged. This is what the, the Lord said, so that you may be greatly encouraged. God gave this promise and his oath. 16, you can just, you can even mark, you can read and study later, but it's um, very complex. You, you'll be able to understand if you read, if you start from the beginning of Hebrew, 
and he has continued to read on, he brings really a great understanding about it. But it then says that in 16, people swear by someone greater than themselves, and they ought to confirm what he said and put an end to all arguments. <laughs> he said that promise, it is something, but a note is another thing. And this is what he says that bef because God wanted to make the unchangeable nature of his purpose, unchangeable nature of his purpose, very clear to his heir, which is us. So what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath because he wanted to make sure that it will not change. The simply fact that God says that I am powerful in your life to, to make, to, to carry you so that you will rest your confidence in God, so that you rest your hopes in God, so that you rest, you rest your mind, rest your peace, rest everything in God. God says that um, because of that, he did not just give a promise, but he gave on an oath as well. On an oath so that God did that so that by two unchangeable thing in which it is impossible for God to like God cannot lie. Because he cannot lie, you already did it. He says that to the Abraham's heir, and we are the heir of Abraham's. And then he says, and then he says that who have fled to take hold? Who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us? Be greatly encouraged. We are the one who have gone under the shadow of the Almighty to take refuge. And because we did that so. Everything that God has promised, everything that God has done is going to come to pass, is going to be fulfilled, is going to hold because he is a God that cannot lie, is the God that cannot turn. He says that he neither lie, repent, or turn back from his word, but everything that he has said is going to pass in your life. He says that my purpose is to come to pass because that's what in Isaiah 66, mm, well, Isaiah, Isaiah, as, um, well, Isaiah 64 says, he said that I make known the end from the beginning. And it said that I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Your purpose for your life, it will stand. And you will do everything, everything that you have assigned in your life, he is going to do it. And if it's, and I say Isaiah 55 says that, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your, are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As if heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return it without watering the, the earth and make it burn and flourish, so it is healed in seed and the soil and bread for it. He said that all the plans, all the words, all the purpose, every word that are spoken concerning your life, it shall, it shall, it shall what? flourish and burn, hallelujah. And so my word does not come out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and will achieve the purpose in which I have sent. Every word, every purpose, every promise that every that the Lord has spoken concerning your life, it shall surely come to pass. Neither that you have the knowledge of it or not, neither that you are aware of the purpose of God upon your life or not, neither a, you just have to be grateful. The one advantage that we have is that even in a hardship and in painful moment and in, in that for a moment that you think I no longer can do it, you remain because you say that his purpose will remain and his purpose is not considering, it's not about just his word. His purpose is written in heaven, in his book, everything concerning your life. Sometimes for that thing come to pass, you have to go through painful situation. You have to go to hardship. You have to go to pain. Somebody has to die sometimes so that whatever God has written concerning your life can come to pass. But do not be discouraged. Do not lose heart. Because in Hebrew says that that is the hope, the assurance that we can hold on as Abraham heirs. That is a God that not lie. And because he, he cannot lie, he cannot, he, he cannot change. He did that by promise 
Abraham bought a promise in an oath. That is a sure because if you promise to Abraham, he did not just promise to Abraham. He said that that promise was for Abraham and for Abraham's children. And we are the heirs of Abraham. We might not be the Israelites, but because the promise that made that God made Abraham, it was for whole humanity. So take hold. Remain strong. Your faith does not lie on things that you see because we walk not by flesh, nor by might. We, we walk not by, by flesh, nor by flesh, but we walk by the spirit. Not on the things that are seen, but the things on the unseen. Hallelujah. Moses saw the glory of God. Joshua saw the glory of God. Manifested both before their eyes. For God, for the promise of God come to pass in the people of Israel, where the prophets were spoken concerning them about 400 and something, and something years ago to come to fulfillment for Moses have to descend. And by that, they saw the sovereignty of God by the deliverance of people of Israel. They saw it. But uh, let me ask you, was that deliverance easy? No. Even Noah didn't get it easy. You may think that no, got it easy. How can a man that a society that never saw rain and somebody like probably Noah be one of the, of course Noah was old already because uh, the scripture said that was really old. And then people take him as a fool. Of course, I mean like, how can he say that in rain? What, what is even rain on its first place? We never heard of such things. But he believed. That's what I said in the beginning, believing. He says that they reject, <laughs> they reject hearing. Roman says that they rejected. They did not acknowledge. Joshua acknowledged. He acknowledged and because of it, he saw the suffering of God. God fought for him and God is going to fight your battles for you. God is fighting, he's working on your behalf. That thing may seem that is delaying, but God says that I'm working out. Noah was considered probably as a foolish in his generation. Like, how can he cross? What is this? Is called? We never saw such thing. Like, ah, what is saying about the rain? There was no such thing as rain in this land. We never, because that time, no rain have come. Nobody knew what was rain. People know that this water, how can water fall from heaven? Water is coming from the ground. Read Genesis. He said that water was coming from the ground, that's water, the ground of the old. But because of that, you know, so Joseph, all the painful thing he went through. <laughs> okay, so my time is almost up. So I'll just round off. It's already conclusion. So um, we also saw um, Joseph. He went through painful moments. Yeah, we went through painful moments. Joining the prison. David, David could actually say that, ah, that anointing that I've received, it's a lie. I mean, how can I be serving so? And here am I, years after years of his promise, of his anointing. But definitely, Joseph and, and Moses and David, they saw the promise of God come to pass in their lives. But was not before, was not without pain. I'm not saying that you might go through pain. No, I'm just saying that even if you are going through pain, even you are going through that situation, remain strong because His promise is going to pass because He's not a God that can lie. Such was the position of Job. Such was the position of Daniel and his companion that went through suffering, went through a lot. But God was sovereign enough to restore because He said that He's an all powerful God. He's the all powerful God because He's an all powerful God. He restores, He gives to pass, He, he, he makes the impossible come to move in our lives. Such was the case of Peter and John and Paul that though he, those people, those people went through a lot. Paul was even denying Christ, but even after denying, God was so sovereign that he had to restore him. And such is the position that we are right now, that sometimes we feel like we cannot be restored, we cannot be restored, I'm too broken. But if Paul, if Peter was restored, and he was the one of the great leaders in the house, in the, in the first early church, then how about you? God is able. Just remain strong and hold on. 
Those people remain strong. Nothing could shake them, even after the experience. Those experiences are there, yes, but out of them, it will make us stronger, will make us unshakable, will make us firm. That it says that we work all things out for good. That, that might not be good for you, even might be good for somebody else that will come after you. That will be his mentor. That will be somebody that will help them to grow. You know? So be strong. Because out of that hardship, faith were bound. Things will hold them. Be convicted. Be convicted. Say that I'm convinced that nothing. And you, with all the knowledge, that's what I was saying in the beginning. With knowing and understanding all this about God, give us a clear picture on how we can see God, how we can see ourselves, how we can relate to God, how we can relate to each other, how we, how that that also, that understanding of all this help us to work even in this season of COVID, even in the seasons of, of, of our lives, and help us to remain obedient and help us to walk in faith. He said that just like Paul said, I've fought a good fight, I've hold on the faith, you know, and, and out of hold on that faith, we see the promise, and the promise of God is that one day, one day God will come and take us back to the Father and we're going to be to the Lord. This is not our home. We are just in passage. Hallelujah. And this is a conclusion of my message, of the message that I have. Not my message, it's the message of the Lord, but it's a conclusion. I just want us to bow. I just want us to pray. Yes, we have heard so many things. Probably it's a place in our life that we need God's help. Just begin to pray that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Help me, hallelujah. Help me, hallelujah. Help me. This word of God is so important because it is what keeps us in faith. It was give us the hope. It's what give us, if without it, we are almost like crumbling. But because we have the word of God, we have his promise. We have the assurance that he gave to us. We can remain strong. Just pray.